Welcome back. You are tuned in to Trader's Nation. Thanks uh, for staying with us. I'm pleased to have another original broadcast interview this time with Cheryl Crane, book author of the Control Freak Revolution. Cheryl, welcome to Trader's Nation. How are you today? I'm great, Kurt. How are you? Good, good. Thanks. All right, what brought you to write this book? Well, I, uh, I'm a recovering control freak myself. Are you good? That's yeah, always the first step. Yeah, self-admitted. <laughs> That's right. That's right. We have issues, don't we, Cheryl? Yes, we do. But, you know, <laughs> the whole purpose of the book it got me to thinking, you know, um, many times when we're called a control freak, obviously it's a negative thing. Yeah. And it got me to think I work a lot as a consultant with leaders and managers, and I, I, I sort of did some research and realized that just being a leader or being a manager, by the by, the, the very merit of being that as a, as your title, right? You're called a control freak, right? Because your job is to lead and direct and cause people to do things, right? Right. And if people don't like what you're asking them to do, well, then you're a control freak. Yeah, and and not a lot of people, you know, some people don't mind it because they know they know that there's a certain hierarchy that's in place, and there's reasons for why people ask for things. That, to be done. I mean, it's just that simple. So some people have a hard time with it and some people don't. They realize this is part of the overall scheme, isn't it? Yeah, and you know, um, my whole purpose in writing the book was that, you know, if you're a self-admitted control freak, then, you know, read the book and figure out how you can be a nicer one. Yeah, <laughs> right. If you're not admitted, then it's time to sort of examine your behaviors and look at how you are causing people to not like you, to not work for you in the way that you want them to. Yeah. Um, sort of a wake-up call to yeah. sort of say, you know, being a control freak can be a bad thing, but it can be a very good thing if you're controlling the right things. Right. Well, you know, it, it's, isn't, it, isn't it fair enough to say that, you know, being a control freak, or let's just say managing different people, we really got to wear different hats, don't we? Because each person you manage really has a different personality, and you have to draw out of yourself to bring out the best of that person you're managing. You know, very good comment. Um, I, I have a whole segment in the book about personalities, yeah. and I talk about one of the personalities that is, in my opinion, more controlling than the others is the driver personality, yeah. because their goal is to get things done. Right. You know, it's just, come on, we've got to get things done, they're results focused. But often they behave that way at the detriment of all of the other personalities. For instance, the deflector personality, which is a very, very nice soft, calm person, right? and they will not respond to overt, you know, get this done. In fact, what will happen is you'll manage them by fear, but you won't manage them by inspiration or relationship. Right. And, you know, and then there's the dancer personality who wants to have fun, but big picture focused. Um, they can actually relate well with the driver, but get frustrated when the driver will delegate something to them and then micromanage it. Yeah, wouldn't you agree, though, that it, you're, you're, you're going to get better results as the driver uh, by inspiring people than by fear? Yes, that's the whole purpose of, yeah, that's the goal. See, a lot of drivers, though, don't even realize that they're using fear. In fact, I have a client right now that I'm working with as a consultant, and a uh, $100 million company, highly successful. Yeah. Uh, however, this person does not see the merits in changing things just because her employees are asking for something different. Right. So very, you know, strong driver personality who says, well, we've done it this way and we've not, and it's worked, so why should I change now? Right, right. So and what do you do so when you know, you got somebody like that where they're so stubborn that they're not going to budge off of their posture? Do you have to remove them? You remove uh, the well, driver, change the driver out? Well, you know, you can't remove them, but you have to give them, you have, see, drivers are very, you have to speak their language. So yeah. in this case with me, it was me coming to the bottom line and saying, you're right, you know what? It's a $100 million company. You have been highly successful. And here's the future of work. Generation Y will not work as hard as Generation X and the boomers have. Right. So unless you adapt to it, you're going to continue to have the problems you're having, which is turnover, you know, uh, people not working for their leaders. So you, you have to put it to them as here's the, here's the result of you not changing your mind. Right. When you put it down to dollars and cents, drivers are very logical, right. very rational as soon as you speak their language. <laughs> that's right. And yeah. that's key to it, isn't it? Speaking their language. Uh, absolutely. You know, I think of all of us, whether you're in leadership or not, we, we expect people to understand us. Yeah. But we don't make the effort to understand them and say, well, wait a minute, maybe it's the way I delivered this that caused the pushback. Yeah. Now, drivers are named for that reason for, you know, because they, they got this drive. How do they do it without running people over? Well, you know, in the book, I think the drivers get a lot out of my book because I talk about myself. Uh, you know, I admittedly say I'm a recovering control freak myself. Right. Driver is my, one of my high personality styles. I was in leadership at a very young age. I was 23 when I got my first promotion. Yeah. In my case, it was I got a, I was in the school of hard knocks. I was very fortunate to have a couple of bosses who just 
knocked me around and said, who do you think you are? Right, right, <laughs> you know? right. So in my case, I was very fortunate because I had some people who said, you know, you're really good, but here's some areas where you really aren't. Right. Um, and, you know, for me as a consultant now, I love working with drivers because they, they get it. Like if you, if, you can, if you get the permission to knock them about the head mm-hmm. and say, wait a minute, if you keep going this way, here's what's going to happen and give them proof and give them examples, they will respond and they go, oh, okay, I can see where this is taking me. Yeah. Does a control freak, do they work better under pressure? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. I mean, they almost thrive on it, right? Yeah. Well, see, I, I personally love control freaks. I mean, in my business, I'm working with them all the time. Yeah. What I love about them is, you know, uh, in the book I talk about Donald Trump and Martha Stewart. You know, I give mild examples of sure. them. And, you know, the point is control freaks can be very fun to work for. You know where you're going. You know where you stand. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not manipulating you. They're very clear about what their expectations are. Right. I find all of that very, very inspiring. Right. I'd it, much rather work for someone like that than someone who doesn't tell me what they want. Mm-hmm. They're what I call in the book a covert right. or a freaky control freak. Well, you know? doesn't laying it out, you know, the, the control freak, laying it out like a roadmap, doesn't he bring everybody into the envelope of his ambitions and goals and what, what he wants to do? It's, it's including people. That's exactly right. So rather than it be a, you know, a lone wolf yeah. or someone on his own who says, well, I'm just going to control this and I'm going to get all the glory and I'm going to run with this. Right. You know, a, a positive or funky control freak says, no, wait a minute, I'm going to control this so that it's a win-win for everybody on my team. Right, which I think is important, and I think ultimately that's how you su- succeed, not only faster, but better when everybody's involved. Well, you know, you've you got a lot of great information, Cheryl, in, in uh, the Control Freak Revolution book. Uh, do you teach how to evaluate and improve leadership style uh, other than, uh, you know, what's, what we've already talked about here today? Yeah, I do. I, I go into, um, you know, in the book I actually talk personality style and I talk about the generations. Yeah. But I'm an advocate for believing that you have to educate yourself on all all factors in the workplace now as a leader. Yeah. So, for example, you have to be fairly elevated psychologically in your knowledge of people in general. Right. You know, what motivates people? What Their generation, how, why is a Gen Y not motivated to work until they're, you know, you know have no life? Why is it that a boomer has worked so hard and now they're jaded and saying, what am I going to do with the rest of my life? Yeah. You know, um, so I'm an advocate for looking at the great big picture of all the people. And you said it earlier very well when you said, you know, the key is treating people as an individual. Right. And that, you know, the old style of management used to be, well, I'll just order pizza on a Friday and everybody will be happy. Right. You know? Right, right. And it just doesn't work that way anymore. In fact, you order pizza on a Friday, some people will be happy, but some are just going to go, well, here we go again, another pizza. Yeah, what do you, what do you, what's the big differences between the generations from old school to what's going on out there today? Well, there's four generations. There's the traditionals, there's the boomers, the Gen X, and the Gen Y. Yeah. And, you know, I, I have a blog on my website, CherylCran.com, and there's also a free chapter on that website for, the, for your listeners. Okay. And um, on, on the generations... Literally what it is is that the each generation, it's not that, because a lot of people go, well, who cares about the generations? This isn't new. Yeah. However, the impact in the workplace is different and new because we are now getting a mass exodus of boomers who are retiring. Right. If they're not retiring, they're doing a career change, midlife change. Right. So the world of work is shifting. So what's happening is Gen X, who are in their 30s right now, they're now having families. Right. So, and, and you're seeing this actually mirrored in pop culture as well, is, is all these people in their 30s are having their families, all the values are shifting again. Right. So, so for the last 10 years, it's been a very work-dominated environment. Right. And we're losing a lot of experience out the door, but does that, are we filling that void? Well, the, you know, all the researchers would say no. Yeah. Uh, but then Gen X and Y are very frustrated because boomers have not been transferring their knowledge. So, you know, boomers, we're, we're the factor, or they're, they're the generation that has learned on-the-job experience. Right, they're holding their trade secrets close it's, to them. That's exactly right. <laughs> so Gen X is going, well, I want to be promoted, but you haven't given me any of, the, of your knowledge to help me get there. Right. And so it's interesting, because even though boomers say, well, I'm going to retire or I'm going to do a career change, I honestly don't, and I'm generalizing here, but I think boomers in general have a hard time transferring what they know. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And, All right. And it's frustrating, yes. All right, now, give us that website address one more time, uh, Cheryl. It's www.cherylcran.com. Uh-huh. All right, all right, good. And, yep. and you've, got, you've got a free, uh, there's a free section, a free uh, a category that's on there? Chapter 1 is there, and you can do a quiz to see what kind of control freak you are. 
Okay. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That's nice. All right, it's up on your screen for our viewers and listeners, especially for our viewers. It's up on your screen. You can get a. Uh, you can go to that web web address, uh, CherylCran.com, and of course, now Cheryl, where can we get uh, the Control Freak Revolution? Anywhere books are sold, Barnes and Noble, Noble Amazon.com, yeah. any bookstores. Local bookstore, a guy in the corner, everywhere. <laughs> Wherever books are sold, right, Cheryl? Yeah, exactly. All right, parting here today, we've got about 30 seconds. What, what would somebody get out of your book? What, what's the last uh, thought on it? Uh, bottom line, I think what you'll get out of it is recognizing that in order to get along with people, whether it's personally or professionally, we yeah. need to shift our behaviors into positive control freak. Absolutely fantastic. Cheryl Cran, she's with us here today, book author of The Control Freak Revolution. Woohoo! <laughs> That's right, Cheryl. Thanks for being with us here today. Appreciate your time and your expertise. Thank you, Kurt. You're more than welcome. Cheryl Cran, head over to her site today, too. I highly recommend you go get a copy of that uh, first section, and uh, we'll be right back. Stay tuned right here. Don't touch that dial.